step into the incredible, amazing future as we go exploring tomorrow. And now here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr., for many years, a lot of us have been interested in considering the possibilities of meeting other life forms, other intelligent beings from other stars. Now, if there is life out there, some form of life, and remember, it may be beyond our most far-fetched imaginations. If there is life, and we have our own Earth ships going out in constant, regular, deep space exploration, someday, somewhere, Maybe even out in the gas cloud of the Crab Nebula. Sometime we will meet. Step it up. Step it up, the scanner. Maximum. Maximum magnification. Maximum mag. Ma more, ma more. Sorry, sir. Max is max. You see? And you see? Now, visibly. Water it, water it. Water it, water it, sir. Step up the scanner. Step it up. Don't you understand? I've got to see. Nothing. According to the reading, Captain, nothing, sir. Sir, Captain, hold it. On the bow quarter. Huh? A solid object. 80,000 miles, sir. One o'clock. Unknown object changing. Changing. 12, 12 o'clock. Sound collision. Make ready, Mr. Dort. Now hear this. Now hear this. The captain will now address the ship. First, you've heard the collision alarm. You will all now take action stations. Man all weapons. Condition of extreme alert. Red. I repeat, red in all departments. Instrumentation tells us there is an unknown solid object less than 80,000 miles dead as we go. There is a locator beam on us. I repeat, there was an unknown locator on us, giving us unexpected feedback echo. Men, we are not a warship. May the Almighty be with us. That is all. Mister? Nothing, sir. Now I see nothing on the busy place. Oh. But radio locator. Here, look at it, sir. Up and down. Up and down. Oh, something monstrous. Monster in size, sir. Making lunatic dashes toward us. At collision speed. Then skipping away at the same fantastic speed. We are not a warship. Here it comes. Here it goes away again. All on radio locate. On busy plate by eye, nothing. Can't detect a thing. How many solar systems in our galaxy? How many? How many planets fit for life? And how many kinds of life could there be? If this ship isn't from Earth, and it isn't, it has a crew that isn't human. And things that aren't human but are up to the level of deep space travel in their civilization could mean anything. Yes, sir. Something like this has been talked about and speculated about for years. Mathematically, it's been an odds-on bet that somewhere in our galaxy there'd be another race with a civilization equal to or further advanced than ours. Nobody could ever guess where or when we'd meet them. But it looks like we've done it now. Well, do you suppose they'll be friendly, Captain? Thank the Almighty for the blasters. Here they come in for us fast again, sir. Oh! Pulling away again. Yes, I can read the beam. If you'll pardon, sir, the blasters are for me to write, sir. They were never, were they, designed as space weapons? They can serve as pretty good ones. Because we don't know what they're like, you fool! And we can't take a chance. We can't trust them the fraction of an inch. Sure, I know. Let's try and find out all we can about them. Let's meet. Let's try to be friends with that ship out there. Well, we don't. And you realize why? Because they have locators. Because they might trace us all the way back home without our knowing it. And we can't risk a non-human race knowing where Earth is unless we're sure of them. And how can we be sure? Do you know, Mr. Dort? Do you know, Mr. Dort, with your sentimental poly and a slush pile that calls itself your brain, your mind? Unidentified object retreating against our locator, sir. Back and forth. 
Back and forth the game goes on. They're afraid. We're afraid. Oh, sure. They could come to trade, of course. Import, export. That wouldn't hurt. Or maybe these creatures will be aesthetic marvels, nice and friendly and polite and underneath the Tojo type. But am I going to risk the possible future of the human race on a guess that it's safe to trust them? The one thing I won't risk is having them know how to find Earth. Either I know they can't follow me or I don't go home. And they probably feel the same way. Ready to ship for supplemental command. There, sir. By sight, on the busy plate. I see it. For the first time, by eye. It's a small... No, sir. It's bigger and bigger. Bulb. Bulbous shape, like a pear. Headed for us at extremely high acceleration, sir. Hard about. Hard about, sir. Put us about. Put us about. He's crossing the T. Dort, pass me a relay. Put a relay key to the blasters. Direct to the blasters under my hand. This is the captain. Ready, blasters. Collision course with unidentified space object. Maximum power. Ready, blasters, section one. This is it, men. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. All of us, as American citizens, believe in our inherent liberties and freedoms, such as the freedom of the individual to choose and elect his own national representatives. It has been said that there is only one ruling class in America, the people themselves who, through their vote, have established the law of our land. The real importance of this freedom depends on our accepting the responsibility not only to know what we are voting for or against, but also to choose our leaders for the best interests of the nation. So, accept your responsibility and ensure your freedom. Two spaceships, two scientific expeditions, each uncountable miles from their own home. One from Earth. One from... where? The other ship stopped, Captain. Cut power. Quite stationary, sir. Captain to crew. Steady as you are. Unidentified space object, now stationary. Do not fire. I repeat, fire only on command. This is a trick. You will fire only on command from myself and only when verified. As you are. Stop dead, sir. They are dead for sure. Have a look. How far do you make them? Range 20 miles, Captain. Now they're sending modulated short wave at us, sir. Frequency modulated? Yes, sir. Yes, I see your needle. Apparently a signal. Not enough power to do any harm. Look up in the left bow busy plate, sir. There's something now. Yes. I see movement on the outside of their hull. Their coal black hull. We shine like a mirror. Did you ever hear of a jet black spaceship, mister? We want to reflect a sun. Perhaps they... Want or need to absorb heat from a passing sun. Yeah, I know. Now, what's that thing? Small, round, whatever it is. It's, it's coming out of the side of the ship. Watch. Huh? You're dripping sweat on your instruments. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Yes, I realize what they're up to. If they send anything toward us, it might seem a projectile or a bomb. So they come close, let out a lifeboat, and go away again. Figure we can send a boat or a man to make contact without risking our whole ship, too. Captain, that means... That means they think... Pretty much as we do. Yes, I'm glad that finally occurred to you. Mr. Dort, by law of space command, I'm not allowed to leave my ship except to jettison. Mr. Dort, this is not an order. No, sir. Would you care to go out and look the thing over, whatever it is? The alien ship continued to retreat. Forty, eighty, four hundred miles. He came to a stop and hung out there, waiting. Earthman Tommy Dort, climbing into his atomic-driven spacesuit inside the airlock, heard this mileage report and felt safer, but just a little bit safer. For if the unknown black space intruder had stopped its retreat at four hundred miles, he reasoned... It might not have weapons effective at a greater distance. 
But Tommy felt lonely and a little expendable, speeding toward that tiny black dot which hung in the incredible brightness of the star gas. 4,000 light years from his wife and family and home, speeding toward that tiny black spot, the only solid object he could see in all this glowing space. And then he landed. It was a slightly distorted sphere, not much over six feet in diameter. There were small tentacles or horns projecting from this black space orange. They looked rather like the detonating horns of an old era submarine mine, but there was a glint of crystal at the tip of each. Then through his suit, he began to feel vibrations. A section of the rounded hull beneath his feet opened up. He moved sideways fast. It opened up and out. And when he looked inside into the now open insides of the little sphere, no, he didn't see the first non-human civilized beings he expected. What he saw was simply a flat plate, and on that flat plate, a dim red glow of light came and went. Even inside the protection of his spaceship, Tom Dort felt the hairs in his neck rise and bristle. In momentary terror, he pressed his sleeve button switch communicator. Very good, Mr. Dort. Don't panic. No need to panic. Fix your scanner to look into that plate. Ah, uh, Harry, these creatures are our equals. But, 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 but sir... They what? dumped out a robot with an infrared visiplate for communication, is all. Not risking any personnel. Good SOP for them. Whatever we might do would only damage machinery. That's good. That means they value life as you value yours. Maybe, though, they expect us to pull you with a sphere in on board. They may have a bomb charge that can be detonated when they're ready to blow for their own home. I'll send a visiplate out with a man to face one of its scanners. You return to the ship. Well done, Dort. Yes, sir. But which way is the ship? Head straight away from the double star. We'll pick you up, Dort. <laughs> A tiny black bulbous robot floated in space between two spaceships, ours and theirs. It represented a culture, theirs, which was at least up to ours. Now our two races could be friends. We could also be deadly enemies. We were a monstrous menace to them and they to us. And the only safe thing to do with a menace is, of course, to destroy it. This truce, weeks and weeks... It started to get the crew. Mr. Dort. I'm busy. Still calculating, Captain. Uh, let's see. Where was I in thinking? How do we establish friendship without risk of treachery? Hmm? Friendship is based upon confidence. Or is it? Can confidence be established in a foundation of necessarily complete distrust? If you can be patient a bit longer, sir, I think... I think I've figured out a way we can talk their language. I, I mean, communicate. Since they seem to be stone deaf. You can. I think, sir. You can? I believe now, sir, we can say almost anything we wish to them and understand what they say back. But, of course, sir, you'll, uh, you'll never be able to know how much of what they say is the truth. Well, neither will they about us. Go on, mister. Well, I've managed to hook up what amounts to a mechanical translator. We showed them our recorder in the vision plates, and they showed us theirs. They record the FM direct, I think. Now, they don't use sound at all, even in speech. My guess is, sir, that they use microwaves for what uh, you might call person-to-person -person conversation. I, I think they make shortwave trains as we make sounds. Telepathy? Yes, sir. I think, sir. I'm ready if you are. If you are... That is prepared to talk with their skipper. Turn on your mechanical translator. What? What shall I say to them, Dort? What shall I say? They're waiting. They keep sending something like a CQ. Oh. They're, uh, they're oxygen breathers, sir, and they appear not too dissimilar in certain ways. I'm sure I detected signs of irony. Iron? I mean, sir, that implies humor. In other words, sir, I think they could be likable. All right. Send this. Hi, hi, sir. They're acting suspicious. All right. Say, uh, <clears throat> uh, the appropriate things about this, uh, 
first contact of two dissimilar but civilized races. And that my hope that a friendly intercourse between the two peoples will result. Excuse me, uh, what, what appropriate things? Oh, uh, just a second, sir. Uh, the, the skipper sends you the following, quote, That is all very well, but is there any way for us to let each other go home alive? I would be happy to hear of such a way if you can contrive one. At the moment, it seems to me that one of us must be killed. Unquote. All right, then. Send this. Look here out there, whoever you are. It looks like we have to fight, and one batch of us gets killed. All right, we're ready if we have to. But if you win, we've got it fixed so you'll never find out where Earth is. And there's a good chance we'll get you anyhow. We stayed here a month, and we've swapped information, and we don't hate each other. There's no reason for us to fight except to protect our races. Well... He says, sir, yes, all you say is true, but that his race has to be protected just as you feel that yours must be. He says, quote, perhaps this will help us to think clearly. Suppose we make it so we can't find each other's home planet, but leave a way to communicate in the future. So work out grounds for a common trust. If our governments want to be fools, let them. But we should give them the chance to make friends instead of starting a space war out of mutual panic, unquote. All right, I have it. Send this. Okay, sir. Whoever you are, let's swap spaceships. Send it, send it. He answers. Interesting. What is rest of your swapping proposal? Send this. Swap ships and crews. I remove all star charts and anything else evidential. He removes all his navigational records. We train each other's key crewmen, and I go for home with my crew and his ship. He goes for home with his crew and his ship. That's my proposal. Tell him that's final. If he refuses, I'll blast. Oh, hold on, please, sir. He says, accepted. He says, accepted. With one proviso that we arrange to meet here at this star fix in exactly one astronom of the double star. Agreed. To us, that'll be a year. Send it. Now hear this. Now hear this. On signal, prepare to abandon ship. We sail for home as soon as we have learned to man controls of unidentified space object. And good Godspeed to us all. We will all see Earth again as soon as we are trained and we train them. assumption in the story we just heard that any intelligent entity can and may lie. We wonder just what a lie is and why it is that we expect intelligent entities to lie. Could a machine lie? Could an intelligent machine lie? Well, next, uh, next time we have a discussion on that that I think you'll find interesting. It's called Liar. Fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Heard in our cast tonight were Lon Clark and Lawson Zerby. Script was by Murray Leinster, adapted by Peter Irving. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. Bill Maher speaking. We pause now for station identification.